Okay, guys, I'm sorry. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 55. Title of the message is, last live stream cut off. Um, title of this message is The Highway, The Highway and Traveling Mercies. It's going to be deep if I wanted to go deep. It'd be deep if I wanted to go deep. Uh, let's look at this. Sorry for the gum. Uh, first, uh, Isaiah chapter 55 is the introduction or the foundational scripture to this uh, prelude that we're about to have. And let's go back into it. I was reading last time, it cut off, so let's start from the beginning. I believe in excellence in ministry. Um, here it is, here it is, here it is. And the Lord says this, prophetically, this is what the Lord is saying to you, the Lord is saying to me. And the Lord says, my thoughts are not like your thoughts. Your ways are not like my ways. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts higher um, than your thoughts. Rain and snow fall from the sky and don't return without watering the ground. They cause the plants to sprout and grow, making seeds for the farmer and bread for the people. Um, and the same thing is true of the words I speak. They will not return to me empty and they will make the things happen that I want to happen. And they, and they succeed in doing what I send them to do. And so you will go out with joy and you will be led out in peace. We're talking about traveling mercies and the mountains and the hills will burst forth into song before you and the mountains... And the hills will burst forth into song for you and before you. And all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. And large cypress trees will grow without thorn bushes, where thorn bushes were. And myrtle trees will grow where weeds were. And these things will be a reminder of the Lord's promise. And these things will be a reminder of the Lord's promise. And this reminder will never be destroyed. This reminder will never be destroyed. When you think about when you're going out, you're going to think about joy. When you think about when you're being led out, you're going to think about peace. When you look to the hills and you look to the mountains, you're going to be thinking about a beautiful song. When you go out into the fields, you're going to understand that the trees going to clap their hands. That means that the trees going to be, be swaying back and forth in front of you. The large cypress trees will grow where thorn bushes used to be. So God is going to displace and remove and, uh, and, and unplant and, and disallow and veto and negate the thing that caused you disease and caused you issues and, and caused you to be pricked and to be cut and to be hurt. The thorn bush is no longer going to be there. I'm not saying that you won't have a thorn in your flesh. I'm just saying you won't have as many thorns as you had before. I, I'm not saying all your problems won't go away. I'm just saying those thorn bushes are not going to be able to grow in your flesh, grow in your mind, grow in your spirit, grow in your heart, grow in your, your, your wisdom, grow in your work. They're not going to be able to grow there. And this Bible also promises out of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8, if you begin at the interlude of the text, it also says, that it used to be a lot of weeds and nobody don't really think too much about weeds. Uh, they don't think about weeds because weeds don't really have that much value. Weeds don't really do anything to make nothing look beautiful. Nobody wants to deal with weeds. In fact, people go get weed killers. But I'm here to tell you right now that the so sovereign weed killer is here. The sovereign gardener is here. Oh my God, the sar the 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 most powerful gardener is here. The, the sovereign gardener is here. The person who can take care of the weeds and get rid of the weeds without giving you cancer is here. Because you know when you go out to go get a weed killer, they say that it's killing people and it's giving people cancer. No, leave the synthetic mess on the shelf. God himself will ascend. He will descend. He will move through your property. Move through your spirit. Move through your womb. Move through your mind. He's going to get rid of the weeds. He's going to get rid of things that have come up that are not glorifying your life. God is going to move it. Okay, Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 12. So you will go out with joy and be led out in peace and the mountains and hills will burst forth into song before you and all the trees in the field will clap their hands. Large cypress trees will grow where thorn bushes were. 
Myrtle trees will grow where weeds work. Myrtle trees going to grow in the place of weeds. Mm. These things will be a reminder of the Lord's promise. Just, just, just say, God promised me something. And this, these things will be a reminder of the Lord's promise. And this reminder will, will never be destroyed. That was Isaiah chapter 55 that I just read. Now we're going to go into the real text the real text and this is going to be powerful i want us to go over to isaiah i mean i first kings chapter 18 first kings chapter 18 and we're gonna we're about to start talking about um elijah and his vision and his ability to see small things and before i go into that i want to say something i want to go into something right right quick the thing I want to go into real quick is this right here. You got to recognize and you got to understand that when we start to talk about traveling mercies, when we start to talk about traveling mercies, when we start to talk about new mercies that we see every day, when we start to look at what traveling mercies does to us, traveling mercies is something that we... Just a minute. I'm live. I can't take that. Um, traveling mercies is something um, that we, ourselves, we need every single day. Traveling mercies is something that can also be known as the angel of God's presence that goes with us, that goes before us, that goes around us, that is our, 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 our company, our accompanying power, our accompanying glory. That when we say traveling mercies, you got to understand that that mercy sometime itself is an angel. You got to understand that sometimes that mercy itself is the supernatural power of God. Sometimes you got to understand that that traveling mercy and that, that mercy that is dispensed around us in ministry, around us in purpose, around us in destiny, that, that, that manifested mercy is a supernatural being, a hidden figure. You can't see the mercy. You can't really feel the mercy. It is a hidden figure, but that hidden figure is the thing that's protecting you as you go and as you come, as you are led out and as you come in. It's a traveling mercy. It's the company of God. It is the presence of God. It is that thing that compels you and motivates you and gives you instruction and not direction. The Bible says that the the Lord will go before you and make the crooked way straight. When the Lord goes before you and makes the crooked way straight, he, when the Lord goes before you and makes the crooked way straight, he goes before you and he blocks the enemy. He blocks the serpent. He blocks anything in the path that can hurt you, that can harm you. He blocks spiritual accidents. He blocks physical accidents. He blocks the accidents from happening. He does not allow it to happen. He does not allow it to take place because that is a traveling mercy that you receive. You can never get on the highway. You can't perform you can't perform the way you need to perform on the highway. You can't drive the speed limit that you want to drive. You can't do what you want to do when you're on the highway without the mercies of God. God is the thing that accompanies you. I want you to know that the Bible says that there was one day and one time when King David needed traveling mercies and God gave him traveling mercies. And when King David was going forth and King David was walking with the ark, this is not my text. I'm just freestyling. Just let me flow with the freestyle and King David was flowing and King David was going forward and he was dancing and he was real happy he was having and he was receiving traveling mercies see there was one man who didn't have traveling mercies and he didn't have the power and the grace of God with him but David had traveling mercies David can handle that ark they oh, don't make me preach David can handle that ark David can handle that showbread David can handle that anointing David could dance before God David could get naked before God David could do what he wanted to do because he had traveling mercies. So when he was operating and he was moving with the ark of God and he was dancing and he was going and he was praising and he was worshiping and he had the ark of God's presence and he was going forth in God and he was doing all of these things and he was being happy and he was being blessed. He 
at traveling mercies, new mercies we see every day. The presence of God itself in itself is a mercy. I said the presence of God itself is a mercy. The presence of God itself is a power. The presence of God itself is the anointing that destroys the yoke. The presence of God itself is that invisible figure. The presence of God itself is that man, is that man, is that anointing. And so like I said, King David was traveling. And when he was traveling, he was traveling with the ark. And the only way he could travel with that level of power, that level of influence, that level of glory, that level of victory, that level of power was because he had to have mercy. He had to have the mercy seat. And because he had the mercy seat, because he had to have traveling, traveling, traveling mercies. Because he had to have traveling mercies, traveling mercies. This one, God. And you gave me someone to love, and I'm sorry, you had to fix them. You gave me someone to love. I had to fix that real quick. Okay, so anyway, let's get back to traveling mercies. I had to fix something that came up on my screen. But when you have the traveling mercies of God like David did, you got to make sure that when you receive those traveling mercies that you're dancing before God. Not only are you supposed to be dancing before God, but you better be worshiping before God. Not only should you be worshiping before God, but you should be praising before God. Not only should you be having those type of attitudes and those type of mannerisms when you're traveling with such a high level of mercy and grace on the highway. Oh my God. You should also have a clean heart, a clean heart. When you are traveling and you're going forth with those mercies, because those mercies and the mercy seat itself is the thing that was accompanying David. It's a lot of people you operate in ministry, you operate at a certain capacity, you operate with a certain power, a certain power, a certain authority, and you have never really acknowledged the fact that there is a mercy seat. The mercy seat is not just the seat that is on the Ark of the Covenant, but the mercy seat itself is a seat that you sit in as the presbyter when you take your rightful position in the church, when you take your rightful position in leadership, when you take your rightful position as the king or the queen, whether you're the king of Scotland or the king of London or the king, it's the rightful position that you take. When you take that rightful position, when you take that rightful stance, you are receiving a mercy seat. Every presbyter, every bishop, every pastor, every shepherd, every prophetess, every woman of God, when you take your seat in the platform, when you take your seat in the political powers and the government, when you take your seat. Oh my God, when you take your seat, when you sit down, you're sitting in a place of mercy. If it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, you would have stumbled, you would have died, you would have died in the seat because the sins that were on your life when you were sitting in that place of power, the Bible says in the powers that be ordained by God, when you sit in certain places, there are certain righteousness that God expects for you to have. That's why the Bible says, and when the righteous, the righteous are in power, people are happy. But when somebody who is not righteous, Righteous is leading. Everybody is upset. There is a certain level of mercy that is applied to your bishop chair. There is a certain level of mercy that is seated there on your chair as the pastor. There is a certain level of mercy that is seated there before you ever get there. There is a certain level of mercy on the teacher seat, on the evangelist seat. There is mercy on that seat. Traveling mercies lead you to a mercy seat. I said traveling mercies lead you to a mercy seat. When you sit as the president of the United States, there's a certain level of mercy that is on that seat. When you sit as the governor of a, of a state, there is certain mercies that is on that seat. 
mercy when you oh kara there is traveling mercies oh kobi akarabashaya when you get there oh my god before you get there to that place of power when you sit there and you're not the governor but you're the mayor oh my god there is mercy on that seat i tell you today even if i didn't prophesy it to you i'm just making you cognizantly aware that traveling mercies has to go with the highway oh my god the highway you want to go high you want to go high you want to go high. the bible says that we are already seated in heavenly places it's the highway so if you're going to deal with the highway it's new mercies that you must accumulate that you must have every day sitting high and looking low depending on what you do for a living depending on what you do for ministry depending on who you teach for every professor for every professor that is a mercy seat a mercy seat because the higher you go the more conflict Sometimes the more chaos, sometimes the more confusion, because people expect you as a judge, Deborah and Rebando Rabataya. The judges have to have a mercy seat. Judges got to have a mercy seat. Oh God, the 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 the, the Senate, the Senate, the Senate has to have a mercy seat. The first lady has to have a mercy seat. Uh, uh, what's her name? What's her name? The woman, the, the Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, even at her old age, she has to have a mercy seat. She's sitting and she's speaking and she's talking. And sometimes even when she speaks against the head of the United States of America, she's able to do it because the mercy seat. She holds the javelin, controls the floor as the house speaker, but she has a mercy seat. I tell you today to thank God for the mercy seat. You are about to be sitting real high. I'm supposed to be in 1 Kings chapter 18, but without notes, God got me going all these other places. Every protester, every protester, you need a mercy seat. You need traveling mercies. Every protester, every protester that is on the street, I dispense a level of mercy from a throne room perspective as a prophetic beacon of God's power and light in the earth. I deploy the angels of mercy up and down the highway, up and down pol political parties. I decree and declare that lawyers are divinely covered with mercy. I decree and declare that judges, no matter how high, no matter how low, that they get a new heart in their spirit to be able to deploy the right thing and the right decisions and the right judgments in a time of war because the United States of America is now approaching the brinks and the battle lines of war. Not yet, this is like a World War III situation that I'm seeing. I don't like to prophesy out of a throne room perspective when I'm on here because I like to stay subliminal in my prophetic authority and I never like to prophesy like this because I don't like people to steal prophecy from it, but I see a third war, a third war, a third world war, third world war coming. I see battle lines being drawn. And you will have many and many and many and many adversaries on one side. And then you will have another opposing forces on the other side. But in the middle of that battle, you will have God himself. This is something like something like I don't know about the war of Armageddon. I would need uh, I would need a man. This my, my, my man to be talking about that. Uh, I don't want to go into that, but ah, uh, because in, in, in the only way that this thing could be stopped or delayed is for people to start doing right. You got to do right. You got to do right. You got to do right. First spiritual, first spiritual, second natural. First spiritual, second natural. The things that are spiritual govern the spiritual, the natural world. The things that are spiritual govern the natural world. First spiritual, first natural. Traveling mercies. Because new seats are coming up. Traveling mercies. You're going to need certain levels of mercy for this level of government, this level of, of political power. No, no man on earth. No man on earth, no woman on earth is going to be able to sit you in this, this political seat and, and, and cause you to have this type of political power. 
No influence in the earth is going to do it. It was predestined and preordained for you to be where you're about to be at. There will be a great and a mighty shift in the political realms. And people will no longer be proud to identify as either Democrat or Republican. People now are becoming a freedom movement. I read it became a righteous movement. And a righteous movement is going to displace and remove the, the powers and the parties that have been. Forget a tea party. Forget a tea party. This ain't no Boston tea party. People don't want tea no more. We want coffee. So for all the pretty little first ladies who still want to do coffee... I still want to do tea. You have tea, but we're dealing with coffee now. We're dealing with drink that can keep us awake. We're not dealing with tea that makes us go to the bathroom. We're not trying to worry about that. Right now, we're dealing with coffee. You need a certain level of mercy to travel spiritually, spiritually, emotionally. I never had a, I had a dream. And in my dream, there was a red car. And the red car was up. And first the, ground, the car was on the ground. And the car, I got in the car, but when I got in the car, I was in the car, but didn't feel myself in the car. And the car was up in the clouds and started moving through the clouds. And I was in it. But it was up and it was moving through the clouds. A car, up, moving through the clouds. And I, I didn't know. I, and as a matter of fact, don't mark me on that because I don't know if the car was red. I, I just know it was like a bright color. And I was up and I was in the car. As a matter of fact, I don't know if the car was gray or what? I just know I was in, and at the time, I, at the time I was thinking about Texas for a whole lot at that time and I had that dream. I don't know, I don't know why. God will give you traveling mercies. God will give you traveling mercies. And now I feel like going over to Philip, I'm talking about the invisible, God in, in, invisible figures. I feel like going over to Philip, Philip, you know, Philip in the New Testament, Philip, the, the, I don't want to do with that. I just hear God and then I'll be flipping over because he was transported from one place to another. He was here one minute, then he was there the next. The prophet Elisha, traveling mercies, traveling mercies. God, God gave him some traveling mercies. First of all, he let him, he gave him divine supernatural speed where he was able to outrun the chariots. Mm, uh, uh, and, and then God gave him supernatural, supernatural traveling mercies again. And then he was taken up real quick and the chariot came and got him and took him. Traveling mercies. Traveling mercies. The Bible said, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not. I'm not using notes. I only hear God and telling you what he's saying. Nobody's going to die, but you do need traveling mercies. I'm trying to give you visual perspectives and visual pictures to let you know that because you are who you are, you are who you're becoming, and you are who you will be because of traveling mercies. Even if you don't see a car right now while I'm talking, even if you don't see a train right now, even if you don't see a bus, even if you don't see a plane or a helicopter, it is traveling mercy. Huh? Traveling mercies in the realm of the spirit when we pray and we receive clearance and we get altitude in prayer and we receive a breakthrough. It is a mercy that is deployed with our prayer that gives us access to the Father for the Father to hear our voice, incline his ear to our voice, and then answer our prayers. I'm supposed to be over here, uh, but I'm steady hearing God say, Philip, 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 Philip. Um, and Philip, and I don't really want to go over to the New Testament because I'm still over here in 1 Kings chapter 18, but must be something that I must read over there before I deal with this. So let me deal with uh, this traveling mercy of this man named Philip first. I got to obey God. Let's get Philip up. Philip then came up. So we're talking about the highway and traveling mercies. And you gave me someone to love. Baby, you gave me someone to love. Someone. No, 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 the, the Holy Ghost and the anointing is bad. I called my baby from the phone. I called my man up. I said, baby, I ain't going to front. I said, I was anointed before we got together. I was. But you are the reason that I'm anointed the way I'm anointed. I said, baby, when we go public with our relationship, I will, you will know, no other man but God in this, my man, my man in my life can get the, can get the praise for this glory, this anointing that's on my life right now, the way that I'm flowing in what I'm flowing in. I am swimming in his oil. He is anointed. I'm flowing in his oil. God, this bomb, I can't say nothing. I can't say 
nothing. Could you imagine being 10 months pregnant and can't say nothing? That ain't fair. Because <laughs> now I've got to go over. Because I'm God is telling me to go over to Philip when Philip was traveling. But now God is taking me to this right here. This right here. Remember when um remember when um when Moses was traveling with his wife and his son and he needed traveling mercies, but he didn't know he needed traveling mercies. He had to call, but he didn't know he needed traveling mercies. And 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 then and, and then God was about to kill him. God was about to kill him. He was on the road, he was on the highway, and God was about to kill him. He said, and the wife stood in. The, the wife stood in. And the wife stood in and took a rock. Mm. And the wife stood in and she took a rock. The wife stood in, she took a flint rock, a sharp rock. She took it. And she said to him, you know, you, you know, you, you know, you almost a dead man right now. And Moses, the prophet, Moses, the one who can hear Moses, the one who sees and the Moses, the one who got the instruction. She said, you got us traveling with our baby. You got us traveling with this baby. And this baby ain't done shed no blood. This baby is not circumcised. It's still scared. And she took a flint rock and, and disputed traveling mercies. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And she cut her son's weeder. I call it the weeder weeder. She cut her son's weeder with the flint rock and circumcised him. The man didn't have to do it. The woman did it. And then Moses stood back and said, you are a bad chick. Ah! A black woman. Oh, Kobosha. I don't want to go to the text. If I go to the text, I'm going to be over there. And I don't want to go there. All right. Let's go to Philip. Acts chapter, and, and as a matter of fact, it correlates with 1 Kings. Um, Acts chapter 8, verse 39. And you gave me someone to love. Someone to love. Someone to love, babe. I want to look at this right here. We're talking about the mercy seat. We're talking about the mercy seat. This is how this is how God deals with me in the prophetic. And this is what happened when a man and a woman come together and their anointings matriculate and their anointings merge. The man becomes more powerful and the woman becomes more powerful. And this is how it works. Shit, it's like you get a you get a double portion. It's like the the power because I didn't, I'm talking about traveling mercies and I'm talking about God and hidden figures and I'm talking about mercy seats, political parties, riots, activists, protests, World War threes and fours. Let's look at it. Nobody wants to wear glasses, but we we need them once you get a certain age. But let's look at this word coming out of Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And after this and after the next text, I'm going to be done for today. I want to eat something today. Okay, let's go. And the angel of the Lord said to Philip, and the angel of the Lord said to Philip, get ready and go south to the road that leads down to Gaza uh, from Jerusalem. And the angel again, verse 26, verse uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And the uh, angel of the Lord said to Philip, get ready to go south. Get ready and go south um, to the road that leads down to Gaza from Jerusalem. The desert road. So Philip got ready and went. And on the road, he saw a man from Ethiopia, a eunuch. And he was an important officer in the service of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. And he was responsible for taking care of all her money. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And now as he was on his way home, 
he was sitting in his chariot. He, he was sitting in his chariot reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet. Y'all know I got the tattoo right there, Isaiah 61, Isaiah 61, because I love the book of Isaiah. If you are a prophet and you don't love the book of Isaiah, something's wrong. Isaiah is the most eloquent and dynamic and superfluous and flawless writer, one of them in the, in, in the, in the book. Let's go back. Now he was on his way home and was sitting in his chariot reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet and the spirit said to Philip and the spirit said to Philip, the invisible figure, the invisible figure, God and the invisible figure, the spirit said to Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh -uh. Help me, Holy Ghost. And, 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 and the spirit, and the spirit, which is in God and the invisible figure, the Holy Spirit, the paracletus, the assistant, the divine supernatural power, the mercy, the grace, the comforter, said to him, because the Holy Spirit is the comforter, it is the paracletus, it is a paraclete, it is a leech, it doesn't take from you, but it imputes into you. Okay, let's go. The spirit said to Philip, go to the chariot, go to that chariot and stay near it. Go to that chariot and stay near it. And so when Philip, when Philip ran towards the chariot, the chariot, we're talking about traveling mercies and the highway. Huh? And so when Philip ran towards the chariot, he heard the man reading from Isaiah the prophet. And Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? Do you understand? Do you fathom? Do you reason? Do you master the text? Do, do you understand what you are decreeing out of your mouth? Do you understand the light that you are holding right now? Do you understand this type of a vernacular, this type of a volume, this type of a book? Do you reason with it? Do you understand it? Can you comprehend it? Can you, I remember I went to college and when I went to college, I went to go in the room and I went to go test in reading. And when I went to go test in reading, I was standing there with my mom. I was at a community college at the time. Um, and when I went to the community college down there near Atlantic City, I had to go in there and I had to take a placement test for something. When I went there to go take the, the, placing, the, the test, they said, they came out, they told me and my mom, they said, your, your daughter's so smart, she scored out of reading comprehension. She never has to take no reading at all. She scored out of it. But ask me to score out of math. I, I can't. I tried four times, can't do it. Um, so your brain works either or. All right, so let's, let's, let's keep going. And so Philip ran toward the chariot and he heard the man reading from the book of Isaiah, the prophet. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he answered, how can I understand unless someone explains to me? How can I explain unless somebody explains it to me? Let me slow down. Verse 30. So when Philip ran toward the chariot. He heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. And Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he answered, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? And then he invited Philip to climb in the chariot and to sit with him. And the portion of the scripture he was reading was this. He was like a sheep being led to be killed. He was quiet as a lamb is quiet while its wool is being cut. He never opened his mouth. He was shamed and was treated unfairly. And he died without children to continue his family. His Mm, 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 mm. 34 and the officer said to Philip please tell me who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else and Philip began to speak and started with the script, same scripture and he told the man the good news about Jesus while they were traveling God I love you more and more God, I love you more and more. While they were traveling, 
talking about traveling mercies. This is what you call casting lots before God. This is how my anointing flows. I can't use notes. If I use notes, I'll mess up because I only operate off of the anointing. If you take the anointing away from me, I won't be able to do what I'm doing. This was not a part of my message. When I started talking about the highway and traveling mercies, I heard God, I already said to talk about, and I, I said it, and then God led me to this in the middle of trying to be over here in, in 1 Kings chapter 18, but then we're going to get there. Everything I said today correlates. This is how the, this is how the anointing works. It's, it flows. It flows. Let me end this. And they also said, uh, please tell me who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else and Philip begins to speak and and starting with the same scripture he took the man he told the man about the good news about Jesus and while we were and while they were traveling down the road they came to some water and while they were traveling down the road they came to some water and the officer said look here is water what is stopping me from being baptized? Then the officer commanded the chariot to stop talking about traveling mercies. Then the officer commanded the chariot to stop. And then both Philip and the officer went down into the water. And Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord, the invisible figure, took Philip away. And the officer never saw him again. And the officer continued on his way home, full of joy. But Philip, who received traveling mercies, but Philip, who received traveling mercies was taken from that place and taken to another. Let's look at verse 40 because it says, but then Philip appeared in a city called Azotos, Azotos, and preached the good news in all the towns on the way to Azotos of Caesarea. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. I could talk to you. I could, I, could, I could spin the. I could spin it. I could spin the wheel on the axle and bring seven, seven, seven again. Because we know about Saul, who was trans, 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 knocked off his beast. He didn't have. The, he he received traveling mercies, but although he had traveling mercies, he was knocked off that beast. When he was knocked off of the beast, he was blind for three days because of the light he saw. The light he saw blinded him, caused scabs to be in his eye. Some of you say you want to see that light, you want to see Jesus, but you can't tolerate that type of light because it'll burn your old vision out. You'll get a burnt out vision and you'll get a new vision and you won't be able to see again until you see what God tells you to see. You go, mm, 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 mm. But, ah, but this text right here to, in, in Acts chapter 8, beginning at verse 26, down unto verse number 40 is a powerful text. And it talks about traveling mercies. One man is traveling. He needs understanding. He needs wisdom. He needs insight. He needs to be able to fathom and, 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 and comprehend the word of God. He doesn't know anything about the prophet. He doesn't even know who the prophet is speaking about. He doesn't know how the prophet is talking. And so because God wants to make him a real believer. God wants to make somebody a real believer today. I got to get off. I, 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 really, I got to get off line today. I got I to get off line today. But but, but I, gotta, I, gotta, I, I just want to expound on the text. Can I tell you something? Can I tell y'all something? Some of you, the Bible, the Bible says right here, he said, how can you, how can I, how can I understand it? I have no Rabona. I told my man, I said, I said, baby, you my Rabona. I said, you my teacher. I said, you my, huh, how, how, I want to understand it. I want to understand it, but how can I understand it? How can I comprehend it if I have nobody to teach me? Can you talk to me about Isaiah for a minute? Can you talk to me about who the prophet is speaking about? I, I want to know. I, I don't know. And he's saying to Philip, I don't have the insight. I don't have the prophetic vision. I don't have the 
word of wisdom or the word of knowledge? Can you teach me? And 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 then Philip is saying like this, I, I want to teach you some things. I'm, I'm going to get in your mercy seat with you. You're going to receive traveling mercies. We're going to sit together. People going to see us in the chariot together. People going to see us sitting side by side. But before all that right there happened, you got to be baptized. Because if you're going to receive anything in this realm, in this kingdom, you got to be baptized with the remission of sins. And so he said, he said, they having this, they dealing, right? They dealing. He explains to him that the man that he's talking or that he's reading about that the prophet Isaiah is talking about is Jesus. So, so Philip in this text is manifesting himself as an evangelist at the full epitome of what any and definition and description of what an evangelist is. One who is sent and travels evangelistically, angelically travels, traveling mercies. You about to pick your speed and your momentum up. Again, you're about to pick that speed up again. Baby, the last season of your life won't even be remembered. You won't need... Sorry. I don't want to get no trouble. You are ready. While I'm on the live stream right now, while I'm on the live stream right now, I'm looking at a screen. And on the screen, a baby named Sanaya just popped up. She's on the left. She popped up. They must be live right now. She's a little baby. She's only about this big, but she's three years old. But she's only about this big, but she has a bone condition. Her bone condition causes all her bones and stuff to break. And she, I dreamed about her and her mom last night. And she's very small. And today I'm talking about traveler mercies. And in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in 1 Kings chapter 18, after I dreamed about her and her mom last night, I dreamed they lived like, a, like some projects or whatever. But in, in the text, when I skip back over leave out of Philip and stop dealing with Philip, and I go over to 1 Kings chapter 18, it says, and I seen a cloud the size of a man's hand. It was a little thing. It was a little seed. It was a little glory. It was a little ministry. It was a little, little, little. Ah! God will take your little and make it much. The little girl is very, very small, but she's very, very peculiar. She's very, very rare. And because she's rare and because she's gold and there's not a lot of children with that condition, people love the little baby. I love the little baby. She motivates me. She be like, hello, this is my makeup tutorial today. Hey, everybody. Ha, But let me get back over to this. So he tells, Philip tells the man, he said, listen, he's talking about Jesus. Isaiah is speaking about Jesus. And Jesus is the one who is going to baptize you. And you must be baptized in his name, basically. And so something happens at that time. Something happens and something takes place. And the thing that happens and takes place is so beautiful and so freaking supernatural between them. Something happens and it's so beautiful and so freaking supernatural. Um, what happens and what takes place between Philip and um, the man in the chariot. Something supernatural takes place. And God wanted the man that was in the chariot. To understand and recognize and realize that the supernatural was real. Traveling mercies was real. Mercy was real. The mercy seat was real. A comp companionship was real. A teacher was real. A Rabboni was real. It was real. The evangelistic was real. He wanted him to know all those things were real. And so what happened was this. Thank you, Yara. Thank you, because I can see you on my other screen. And so what he wanted him to know was this. Once I baptize you, you're going to see the supernatural. And so I don't know what type of whole, I don't know how the spirit overtook the man. I don't know how the spirit overtook the man. I don't know. I don't know if he went into a vision. I don't know if he went to a trance. I don't know how long he was out after having an experience with a man like Philip. I don't know how long he was out. I don't know how long I'm saying it like this. I don't know how long he was out. How long he fainted, how long, whatever. I just know that he never seen Philip again. And Philip did not die. Philip was never seen again. He was never seen again. But he was seen, not in that town. But then Philip appeared in a city called Azotos. 
and preached the good news in all the towns on the way to Azotus. But Philip appeared in a city called Azotus and preached the good news in all, all, meaning more than one, all the towns on the way from Azotus to Caesarea. In my closing, because I'm done, Acts chapter 8, verse 26, again. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get ready and go south to the road that leads down to Gaza from Jerusalem. Leave Jerusalem. You ain't got nothing to do with Jerusalem. It's a desert road. It's a desert road. Not many people travel it. It's a desert road. And so Philip, who heard the instructions of God, knew he could travel. Whenever God is going to let you travel, and whenever God is going to let you, thank you for the hearts, thank you for the love, thank you, thank you for the kisses, whatever, them lally, la, 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 la. and whenever God is going to let you travel, and whenever let, God's going to let you to go north, east, south, or west, he'll, the spirit of a living God will say, you could go, you're free to go now. You could go, you could do this, you could have fun. I'm going to release you to go. There's a, a permission there's a promise. You can go. You can travel. Get on the train. Get on the plane. You could go. And said to him. So the Philip got ready and went on the road and saw a man from Ethiopia. A eunuch. And he was an important officer in the service of Candace, the queen. Of the Ethiopian. <laughs> And, and, he was responsible for taking care of all of her money, and he had gone to Jerusalem to worship. So, we got a eunuch who was on his way to worship, and because the eunuch was on his way to worship, God had spoken to another, man or another individual and told the other man or the other individual by the name of Philip, to meet him there, to go there, to meet him there. Isn't that amazing? Isn't Have you ever paid attention to the text? God will speak to two people at one time. God was already speaking to the unit. God was speaking to the unit. And God was also speaking to Philip the evangelist. He was speaking to two men and three, really. <clears throat> he was speaking to three men. God the Father was speaking to the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit. He was speaking to Philip and he was speaking to the unit. A threefold cord is not easily broken. A threefold cord is not easily broken. Traveling mercies. And let me obey God. I want to go over real quick. Let me go, go over real quick. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm in the presence of God now. I'm in the presence of God. I want to go over to Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 2. And I want to go to verse 14. Song of Solomon chapter 2. Remember the title of the, the message is Traveling Mercies, God in Hidden Figures. God in Hidden Figures. I want to talk about this real quick. Song of um, Solomon 2. Verse 14. Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 14. My beloved is like a hiding my beloved is like a dove hiding in the cracks of the rock look, look, look. my beloved is like a dove hiding in the cracks of the rock this is not planned this is not scripted this is what you call having the presence of god in your life when you flip the Bible and you cast lots before God and God is in your hand and when your hand 
flips the text, magnetically pulls through the word of God, and it lands like lots on the word that God wants to give the hearer at the time. This is what it is. This is what God just said. It wasn't planned. It's not in notes. I didn't even count the pages. I just flipped and the Bible went to it. My beloved is not magic. It's the anointing. It's the invisible creator who was not created. It's the invisible God, the invisible anointing, and the good invisible man. And it is the dove. Listen to this. How can it happen? How can it happen? What do you do when your man is like a dove that's hiding in the clefts of a rock or the cracks of a rock? He ain't really showing himself, but he just hiding in the cracks. What do you do when your woman is just hiding in the cracks of the rock? Let me, let me go. I gotta go. And my beloved is like a dove hiding in the cracks of the rock in the secret place of the cliff. Show me your face. Show me your face and let me hear your voice. Oh my God. Your voice is sweet to me. And your face is lovely. Catch the foxes for us, baby. The little foxes that ruin the vine yards while they are in bloom or blossom. And then the woman speaks. My lover is mine. My lover is mine, and I am his. He feeds among the lilies. He does feed amongst the lilies. He feeds amongst the lilies until the day dawns, and the shadows disappear and turn my lover. Be like a young deer on the mountain's valley. Oh my God. Ah, God. Verse number three. I'm going to Song of Solomon's. Now I got to get off of here. I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, Song of Solomon's chapter three. I hear you, God. At night on my bed, I look for the one I love. I look for him, but I couldn't find him. I, I got up and I needed traveling mercies. I, I got up and I went around the city. Because I need to travel in mercies in the middle of the night. You can't be a woman traveling around the city looking for your man, looking for your lover. Without traveling mercies. And I looked for him and he was, I don't know where he was. I don't know where he disappeared to. What do you do when you don't know? When you, if you don't know, but you know you're going to go get your man. You're going to go find him because you're going to get up and you're going to find out where he is. Uh, Kara, and you need traveling mercies. You don't want to end up raped. You don't want to end up abused. You don't want to end up kidnapped. You don't want to end up a part of a sex trafficking sin. You, you, ah, God. I looked for him, but I could not find him. I got up and went around the city and in the streets and the squares, and I looked for him, but I could not find him. The watchman found me as I patrolled the city. And so I asked, have you seen the one I love? As soon as I had left him, I found the one I love. And, and I held him and would not let him go. <laughs> Until I brought him to my mother's house. To, to, to the room where I was born. <laughs> But, but see, but see, this is what had to happen first. But the watchman found me. So while I was looking for my man, when I was looking for the one I love, because I don't know what time he got up out of the bed, but I just got up and I just called. I just got up and I just start searching. And then the watchman. The Bible says that he that watcheth over Israel. Yeah, let me leave it alone. Let me leave it alone. I already, I already, I already told y'all. I, mean, I already told y'all. I already told you. But let me leave it alone. The, the Bible says that he that watcheth over Israel, he does not slumber. He does not sleep. He, he doesn't go to sleep. He he watched. The Bible says, and Jacob was the apple of God's eye, the apple of God's eye. He that watcheth over Israel does not slumber or sleep. The Bible says that there used to be two women that was in the house, but both women was whores. And the Bible says the one woman overslept. And then, baby, I'm not going to sleep on my husband. I'm not going to sleep on my man. I'm not going to sleep on my newborn baby. When you know you pregnant and you know you giving birth and you know that you eight, nine, ten months pregnant, you know how you got to sleep when you 
pregnant, you're supposed to lay on your left side, not your right side, but they tell you from the doctor's office to lay on your left side. You got to make sure that you're able to make sure that the baby is moving and breathing and living. You got to make sure that you are a good watchman, a good watchman over the thing that God has trust you with. The Bible says that Jesus said all that you have given me into my hand. Father, I lost not one except for Judas that the scriptures may be fulfilled. People got to start to recognize and realize and understand that in this season and time of your life, you won't be able to get along with just one person because that is the Judas in your life. I read it. If it happened for God, if it happened for Jesus, sometimes it happens for you and people won't understand it. It ain't for them to understand. I lost nothing. I'm not going to miscarriage. I'm not going to abort. I'm not going to leave my man. I'm not going to leave my church. I'm not going to leave my assignment. I'm not going to leave purpose and destiny. I'm going to capture it. I'm going to love it. And when I grab it and when I get it, I won't let it go. When I, when I grab them, I'm not going to let them go. Because I done grabbed them and I ain't going to let them go. You got to cherish love because now in this day, in this time, in this season, love is scarce. It's crazy, it's scarce, it's da, 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 da. I got to go. That's it. I got nothing to say. I didn't overspit my time today. First Kings 18. I'll, I'll, I'll obey God, but I don't want to. I'm done. I'm done. I ain't got nothing else to say. Just nothing else to say. Nothing else to say. But I got to obey God. And so let me sum it up with First Kings chapter 18. Um, First Kings chapter 18. Elisha told him, go and look. Again, and this appeared. God, you are unbelievable. I want to go to First Kings chapter 18. Um, and I want to go over to verse 43 in my closing of God, hidden figures, traveling mercies, the mercy seat. And then Elisha said, uh, first, first Kings chapter 18, verse uh, 43 and then Elisha said to his servant go and look toward the sea the servant went and looked and see nothing and Elisha told him go look again and this happened seven times and this happened seven times yesterday we talked about the number seven today we're talking about the number seven it came from the live stream before the number seven the number seven the number seven 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 and this happened seven times and the seventh time the servant said i see a small cloud i see a small cloud the size of a human fist uh, coming from the sea one translation is the size of a man's hand. This translation is a very different manifestation of it. It says the size of a man's fist. The size of a man's fist. They say if you put the fist to your heart, the fist and the heart are the same size. Fist and heart. I see a cloud the size of a man's fist. I see a protest. I see a protest. I see a people that's the size of a cloud of a man's hand. I see a people that's only make up 12% of the United States of America. I see a people. They, they're not the greatest. They're not the mightiest. They're not the, they're not, they're, they're, they don't have the most numbers. Mm -mm -mm. They don't have all of the figures. But I see a cloud the size of a protest. I see the... I see, I see righteousness. I see it. I see it. I see. Yes, God. Yes, God. I see a deploying force of political power. I see it. I see it. I see a do right spirit. I see people who have had enough. And although they've had enough, they're not going to continue to operate out of disorder and dysfunction. But they're going to have solidarity and they're going to have unity and they're going to have agreement and they're going to establish new structures and new new laws and new policies and I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Somebody that the size of a man's fist. Somebody just put your fist up. Just put how you do it, how you do it like that, like that, like that. Power to the people. Power to the people. Pump, pump. When a man, when, when boys be talking and they got a girlfriend, right? And they, they got a girlfriend that's in the movie Mo Better Blues. 
in the movie Mobile Blues, uh, Clark Indigo, Shadow, went, uh, didn't, all of them having this, this problem. And somebody didn't sleep with this person. And so uh, Spike Lee says to uh, Denzel in the movie about Clark, tells this about Clark, says, <laughs> and he's like, he's boning Clark? He's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that came from. And Elisha told the servant, go to, okay, wait, listen, I see a cloud the size of a human fist coming from the sea. And Elisha told the servant, go to Ahab and tell him to get his chariot. We left one chariot. Now we're back at chariots again. Uh, we had, we're back at chariots again. After a short time, now let's go back up. Elisha told uh, the servant, go to Ahab and tell him to go get his chariot ready and go home now and go home now. Other, otherwise, the rain will stop him. Go, you got to go home now because you don't want the rain to stop you. Go get your chariot. Go get your car. Go get go get it. And come on, come on. Because you don't want the rain to stop you. By the way, it's raining here in North Carolina today. And it's raining here, okay? And, and, uh, and, and after a short time, the sky was covered with dark clouds. And the wind began to blow. And soon a heavy rain. And soon a heavy rain began to fall. Again, um, Ahab got into his chariot and started back to Jezreel. And the Lord gave his power to Elijah, who tightened his clothes around him and ran ahead of King Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Uh, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. I'm done here today. My job here is done today. And I thank God that I've done it. And I thank God that you guys have been blessed. And, um, and Elisha received traveling mercies. The Bible says that what Elisha did in order to run the way that he needed to run. Mm, 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 mm. The Bible says that Elisha the prophet in my closing... The Bible says, and he tightened, he tightened his clothes. He he tightened them clothes. He 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 strapped that thing tight around his body. He he took his clothes, he tightened it. He said, he said, wait a minute, he that has his loins girded about with truth. Tie me, tie, tie this thing up. Cause I can't have nothing weighing me down. I'm about to run this race. Now I know that the race is not given to the swift. I know it's not given to the strong. I know it's given to the one that can endure. But I'm going to run this race. I'm going to run and not be weary on this highway. I'm going to walk and not faint on this highway. I I'm going to mount up with wings like an eagle on this highway. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to shh, 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 It reminds me of a dream that somebody said they had about me. And they had a dream about, about three days ago before they went crazy. Because they went crazy, but they told me, before they went crazy with their madness, they told me a dream. And they said that they had a dream about me. And they said that they was looking at me, and I had on leopard pants. I had like some cheetah pants. And they didn't understand it. They, they couldn't understand why I was sitting up there with some cheetah pants on. I could tell you why I had on uh, some cheetah pants. Because I refused to let pain slow me down. I refused to let neglect or rejection slow me down. I refused to let pain slow me down. I refused to let my emotions and what I feel and what I'm going through or what I don't have or what I do have slow me down I refuse to stop worshiping I refuse to stop praising I refuse to stop being uh, to stop loving I refuse to allow people into my life who I know for a fact are will come in to try to kill me I can't do it I, I know it I know it looks good I know people think I should but I can't do it I've seen it one time two times three times four times. if I seen it you do it one time you do it two times I, I, can't, I can't do it run farce so the Bible says that he told the one man, he said, listen, you don't have supernatural ability. Mm, now you ain't got that. You ain't got supernatural mercies. You ain't got highway mercies. So you better go ahead before the rain starts. Cause, or you won't be able to go home. You better get up and you better go home now because it's small right now. 
The, the fist is small right now. The glory is small right now. The anointing is small right now. The baby is small right now. The marriage and the ministry and the relationship is small right now. But if you don't get up and go home now in your chariot, get your Bentley, get your Bentley, get your get your BMW, get your 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 your, your, your Jaguars, get all your stuff. Get your stuff up out of here because if you don't get your stuff and get up out of here now, you ain't going to be able to get home because I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. You better make the choices and decisions you got to make and make them now because I see the cloud the size of a man's hand. You got to get up out of here. And, and Elisha said, I, I, I'm going to make sure you make it home all right. I'm going to make sure you make it home all right. But for me, I got speed. I got agility. I, I got the presence of God. I got the power of God. I'm going to run. And I'm not going to get weary. I'm going to run and I'm not going to faint. Traveling mercies, receive traveling mercies. Traveling ministries, traveling. Receive your traveling documents now. Receive your new passport now. Receive your new visa now. Receive, you know, you, you know, you're not dealing with somebody who cares a lot when they don't have a passport. You don't have a passport? You are, you, 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 you are a shame. You, you are a shame. I'm going to go. But you are a scandal and a shame. Anytime you try to go, you, you go, try to go buy a car. You want a fancy car. But if somebody asks you to flash your passport, you ain't got a passport. The reason why you don't got a passport is because you so worried about the form of fashion. The form of looking good while you driving. Driving, but you're not worrying about flying. You're not worrying about really going nowhere. When you are a per person of purpose and destiny, and you know you need traveling mercies, and you need the mercies, and you need to go forward, and you know you got the glory, and the ark, and the presence, and the power, and the man. You get a passport. Get your passport. Get your passport. Get your passport. Get your passport. And when you get your passport, do like this. Get. Get. Get the running. I'm so mad ain't no gym. Get the running. Got to go.